I thank the Prime Minister. Earlier in the week, the member for Lingiari uh, indicated he wished to speak on indulgence now, and I give the call to the member for Lingiari. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, last night we saw a very successful collaboration across the parliament to ensure two seats for the Northern Territory yeah. in our future. Yeah. And I want to thank the Prime Minister and the government for supporting the resolution uh, which was formulated by the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters which was put in this parliament and got bipartisan support. It guarantees us in the long term a seat in the Northern Territory. So today, this gave me the opportunity, I thought it might be a good day to do it, to come here and ind indicate that I'm about to roll the swag. Um, I'm so I'm a bit of a relic. Uh, I'm the only one left in this parliament Senate or House of Reps from the old Parliament House. Uh, so I've taken the decision that I won't be contesting at the next election. I was first elected 33 years ago and I've had 12 elections and 31 years now in the Parliament having lost, sadly, not my delightful day, losing an election in 1996 but being re-elected in 1998. It's been an absolutely an enormous privilege to serve the people of the Northern Territory for that time, and I will continue to serve them until the next election. Of course, Christmas and Cocos Islands are also part, were also part of the seat of the Northern Territory, where I was the single member for four elections, uh, and is also part of the seat of Lingiari, my current electorate, which, just to remind you, is 1.34 million square kilometres and half the Indian Ocean. <laughs> you know, it's uh, a great, great honour. I heard um, I'm, there was no one else in this chamber will know, will have heard, watched this speech, but the great Mick Young stood in the dispatch box when he was retiring from Parliament and talked about what an honour it is to serve in this Parliament. Uh, and it is. It is a huge honour for all of us, no matter where we come from, to serve our communities, to serve the nation in this place. And it's been my honour, my great honour, my great privilege to be able to serve here as a member for the Northern Territory and the seat of Ringiari for now 31 years. I can't think of a greater honour, frankly. I don't think there's any better public services you can do than to speak, we represent your electorate and speak, you re represent your community and speak up on behalf of it. But it doesn't come without cost, as you well know. Um, and this part will be made for very difficult. My family. who have um, shown love, loyalty, sacrifice, forbearance and given me this support over such a long period. Elizabeth, my partner, gave birth to Frankie, our first daughter, a fortnight before <coughs> the first election that I ran in. A fortnight. She was in good shape. And within a fortnight after the election, she was driving with me up the Stewart Highway as part of the new member for the Northern Territory, showing off the child. Frankie is a wonderful young woman. We've had three other children since. They've Tom, Tess, Jack. They've not known anything else but me being a member of parliament. And I have to tell you that that meant many, many years where I was only home eight or nine nights a month. Such was the travel that's required. In fact, I did a bit of a calculation late last year that worked out that over the years I'd been flying in the air for two years. <laughs> Ludicrous. But nevertheless, true. So I want to say thank you, Elizabeth. I love you. As I love you, Frank, Tom, Tess and Jack. 
you are a credit to your mother because she raised you. I was an observer and tolerated, but an observer. I obviously want to thank my friends in the Labor Party and the trade union movement for their ongoing support and the community for their um, working with me over those many years, still to come. My colleagues here in the caucus, you know, I've had a lot of them. Uh, and <laughs> I, I, I might start, <laughs> known a lot of them, and remember I've seen go across this, from past this dispatch block now, eight Prime Ministers, starting with Bob Hawke and Paul Keating, obviously, where I had the great privilege to serve in this period of, I'm unique in this place, well, we're all unique, but in this case, in the Labor Party, because I've been in government for 15 years and a member of the executive for 12 of them. Six as a parliamentary secretary, you know, assistant minister type, and six as a minister in various portfolios. And it has been such an, you, you all know what an honour it is to be able to work with some of the best people in this country who are our people who serve us. And so I take great pleasure uh, in remembering all of those people I've worked with, including my own staff, <coughs> electoral staff uh, and uh, ministerial staff. I remember two people in particular. And I, was, I want to remember them because they're dead. Carol Burke, who used to work, yeah. work for me in my Darwin office, and Jack Crosby, who worked for me, both of whom passed away in the last five years, but both of whom gave sterling loyalty and service to the community as well as to me. We don't get many opportunities to express the disappointments we sometimes have. You know, like over the period, I've seen a bit of shenanigans I've been shafted a bit, <laughs> don't come as a surprise, um, but I've hung in. And I think the interesting thing about the parliamentary process and about our caucus is that despite the differences you have, we have a common purpose. You know, there are some who are pretty adventurous and we see them from time to time, they think they're the best thing since sliced bread. They last about two rounds of the revolving door and then they're off. <laughs> on the other hand, we have people who have commitment on both sides of the parliament um, and that we need to recognise that commitment for what it is. And to my colleagues, I'm so pleased, so honoured to be part of your team. I contemplated talking about a whole range of events that took place, you know, historical events that have taken place over this period, but that will be for another time. Um, because you know, there are some interesting times to be had, there are some interesting things inside the lab. I kept notes, by the way. <laughs> 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 it's, 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 especially when there were leadership disputes. <laughs> So I know who did what to whom and how often they did it. <laughs> I've got very good records, so watch out, you mob. I want to just pay a tribute briefly to the cooperation across the parliament on parliamentary committees. Um, you know, we have the advers adversarial politics across the chamber. You know, we understand all that. But the truth of it is this parliament works really well in the committees. Uh, and I, over the last little while, and I've, my colleagues who are with me share the committees that I'm on, well, I'm sure agree, that we've been blessed by the way in which the committee system has worked for us. And I want to thank, in particular, an odd bloke, the member for Leichhardt. We're on a committee together. He keeps saying, you know, what do you get when you do two Warrens together? A lot of rabbits. Well, 
I'm not sure about that. He's one in the spotlight. And the member for Barara um, for his companionship and good work. Um, he's a good person. Now, prior to me entering parliament, well, I should just say, my first election was an interesting experience, as they all are, but in, I came from, I had to win a marginal seat off you, well, which I did, ultimately, but the NT News was not helpful. <laughs> the NT News was not helpful. One banner headline was, friend of Gaddafi. <laughs> <laughs> Something's haven't changed. <laughs> <laughs> Left wing loony, you know, well, they might be right. <laughs> but prior to entering Parliament, uh, I had the great honour and privilege uh, at one period to work with the great Nugget Coombs. Um, really a remarkable Australian. And I worked with him and Maria Brandle, an anthropologist, on a project in the northwest of South Australia where I worked and lived out of a little Pitinjara community called Pibilajara uh, and with Nugget on this project. And it changed my life. And it's the reason I ended up here. It changed my life because I was living and working with Aboriginal people in a very remote place who were being oppressed and still are in many ways, who were going without. Uh, and I was doing a, a project which was examining the impact of government programs on traditional socialisation. And one of the programs I was looking at was CDEP. Now, I won't go into the arguments about CDEP here, but it, it's given me a history. So it was very important to me. And off Nugget, who was a mentor of mine, I learnt really what public service is. Not only about public service and the way we should engage in it, but the importance of the public service. Uh, and I think we in this place need to comprehend how important the public service is to us and to the Australian community. I then went and worked, I went back teaching for a while after doing this research project out of Australian National University. Then I went to work with the Central Land Council in Alice Springs, where my boss was Pat Dodson. Still is. <laughs> things, things, things don't change. He's up here, look. Well. As, as I'm sure Pat will attest, we were guided by some great Aboriginal leaders, some great people of great wisdom from the bush. They weren't literate. English was their second or third language. They were old men, largely. They were very, in these leadership positions at the time, were not many women. And they taught me, I know, a great deal. And it was what they taught me and the time I spent with Pat and under his guidance that drove me to believe I should become a Member of Parliament. So having a very strong belief in social justice and a belief in the need to do something right, I contested the election. And I went to that election knowing that I needed to rely upon the strength and wisdom of Aboriginal people. And I stand here because of them. The only reason I was, became a Member of Parliament and have remained a Member of Parliament is because of the support I, I've been getting from the Aboriginal communities across the Northern Territory. And I'm not talking about just marginal support here. I'm talking about successive elections where I've been getting 80 and 90 per cent of the vote. That puts me in a pretty unique position, given that 42 per cent of the population of Lingiara are Aboriginal people. To have breathe their voice in this place. And I owe them so much. 
I have learnt so much, so, so much. I've learnt about respect and humility and I've learnt about patience. Patience, so great, such great patience. Now, when I stood up here on the 17th of September, not here, but in the old Parliament House, 1987, to give my first speech, I said among a number of things, as a nation, we have yet to recognise and accord Aboriginal people the justice that is their due. It is still the case. It is still the case. I said, this nation cannot pretend to wear the mantle of maturity until the Indigenous rights of Aboriginal Australians are given formal recognition and the demands by Aboriginal and Islander people for compensation for land stolen and for social and cultural disruption are addressed. In my view, this should involve appropriate amendments to the Constitution. This was 1987. I said it's time that the politics of division in this country were put aside so that the la the last, at last the injustice of the Aboriginal dispossession is recognised and dealt with in a way which is satisfactory to Aboriginal Australians. 30 years ago. And here we still argue about a, the need for a voice to parliament, a makarata and a treaty making truth-telling. We have an obligation, we have a chance. We should be able to do it, Prime Minister. We should be able to do it. Come with us. Let's make it happen. I want to conclude by reminding you that I'll be rolling my swag at the end of the term, not tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to just finish by reading a quote by Xavier Herbert. It's, it's not immediately relevant today because of land rights has been achieved, by and large, except of the deficiencies in native title, which are discussion for another day. But he said this, and I think it's a really strong statement which bears out the need for us to actually do things. Before I do, I want to thank Pat, Mullandiri and Luke for your wonderful support. And he said this, until we give back to the black man just a bit of the land that was his, without strings to snatch it back, without anything but complete generosity of spirit and concession for the evil we have done him, until we do that, we'll remain what we have always been so far, a people without integrity, not a nation, but a community of thieves. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Leader of the Opposition uh, on, in, on indulgence. Thanks very much, uh, Mr Speaker. Well, there are moments in this place that count, and that's one of them. There are moments we'll remember, and that's one of them. And there are people who make a difference, and Warren Snowden is one of them. Being in this place since 1987 uh, is, or in, in the old chamber, I first met uh, Warren, I worked in the old parliament and uh, I met Warren uh, then and was struck by his passionate commitment to his electorate, the people of the Northern Territory, but particularly to First Nations people. A passionate, determined, uh, sometimes uncompromising, difficult at times, always focused on the end game, always focused on the outcome and making a difference each and every day. Someone who wasn't successful in 1996, when the tide goes out, sometimes takes good people with them, and it did. But I, I always uh, 
always uh, am in awe of people who hang in there and choose to run again for unfinished business. And indeed, there was unfinished business uh, for Warren Snowden. Uh, serving as a parliamentary secretary in the former Labor government, uh, but then coming back and serving as a minister in uh, the Rudd and Gillard governments. Uh, in Veterans Affairs, Defence Science and Personnel, Indigenous Health, uh, he is someone who is a big loss to this place. And veterans and serving personnel, uh, men and women who wear our uniform, uh, have such high regard for Warren Snowden because they know that he is on their side. Mm -hmm. He'll continue to serve in the term and when Warren and I had a private chat a little while ago, um, uh, he was determined uh, that he wanted to see the people of the Northern Territory maintain two seats. Uh, not out of personal interest, but because it is in their interests uh, for such a, a large geographical area uh, which does have uh, a lot of its population in the capital city, to not be forgotten the people in the regions, in uh, remote indigenous communities, would be, would struggle to get the representation unless there was two seats in the Northern Territory. So he fought very hard to make sure that was going to happen, even in the knowledge uh, that uh, he had come to uh, his, his decision. Uh, I've asked him to continue. We'll, we'll have some changes of arrangements. The Prime Minister will have some. I've, I've asked him to continue to serve on the front bench uh, because he will work until the very last day to the best of his capacity as he always had has. Warren's played a, a mentoring role to not to a generation of Labor MPs but because of the nature of this place to generations of Labor MPs, as well as connecting with people on uh, the other side of the chamber as someone of goodwill. Uh, his experience counts. His knowledge counts. Uh, when I, uh, I rang uh, Warren, the, I've been in a couple of ballots in my life, and I've never had uh, as quick a conversation, though, as I had with Warren. I rang him up and he just answered, I oh, yeah, won't elbow here yet, I'm voting for you, bang. That was what uh, happened on, I think it was the Monday uh, after the, the last election. Uh, and and that was, that's Warren. What you see is what you get. He tells you what his view is, he puts it forward, regardless of, you know, doesn't do a calculation of what's in his interests. He has a view and he's prepared to put it and prepared to argue his case. And uh, that's why he is respected by all of us, uh, why he is loved by most of us, <laughs> including myself. Uh, Warren, uh, a few of us will gather tonight uh, at uh, the usual place that Warren convenes as part of his uh, elder states person, uh, getting people together uh, to engage in dialogue. I join uh, with him on behalf of the Australian Labor Party in thanking Elizabeth an extraordinary sacrifice. You know, the Prime Minister and I live pretty close to uh, the, uh, the runways at KSA. Uh, to represent such a large electorate where you have to travel such distances, uh, travelling on those little planes to around that electorate is, uh, is a major challenge. And to Frank, Tom, Tess and Jack, we thank you as well for sharing uh, your dad with us. Warren, you, uh, we will have more to say at uh, events to come. But on behalf of the Australian Labor Party, thank you. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you'll continue to do as the member for Lingari and as a member of uh, my front bench until the next election. And thank you for what you'll continue to contribute because one of the things that uh, differences that's happened uh, when Warren uh, was here, and I will recall both uh, after 96 as a member but before then, was that he was a spokesperson for First Nations people. And one of the 
things that has happened in this place, and we're better for it on both sides, is the fact that we actually have representation as well from First Nations people. That hasn't happened by accident. That's happened because people from Warren, like Warren, uh, very early on have campaigned to make sure that the Australian Labor Party took the decisions uh, that uh, we have uh, to get uh, that representation. I mean, Pat Dodson wasn't doing numbers in the WA branch, I've got to tell you. <laughs> you have to make those conscious decisions that we need a parliament that reflects Australia. And that means getting First Nations people here. Yeah, yeah. Warren has been absolutely, unconditionally determined to advance the interests of First Nations people. It's fair to say, I think, um, it would be difficult to think of anyone over such a period of time who has that as their record in this place since Federation. Certainly no one would have argued the case through native title, through land rights, through now constitutional recognition, as Warren has. And that is a great legacy. That is a great legacy. And when we recognise First Nations people in the Constitution and give them a voice to this place, as you have argued, you can feel good about making a difference and making a contribution to that change happening. Yeah. The Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I, I thank the member for Lingiari for his tremendous service to our country. Can I also thank you for the acknowledgement of the way that our parliament has come together to ensure that there are those two seats for the Northern Territory. And can I thank you for your passion and advocacy, along with my many colleagues here who have felt similarly, and uh, I'm pleased uh, that that has met with your <laughs> agreement and that you could stand here at this dispatch box and, and you could say that here today. Uh, as the Leader of the Opposition says on, on one of the, one of those important moments here in our parliament. I've known Warren Snowy for some time as well, since my place here. The sort of chap when you come here as a, a, a new, new member, would give you a nod in the, in the corridor or down at the gym or give you a friendly smile or say something usually pretty funny, often at your own expense. Um, but that's the sort of bloke he is. Warren, like all Territorians, are Territorians first. And he's a proud Territorian, some might say. He was made for the front page of the NT News. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure he got his fair share of them, as some of us have. But as the Leader of the Opposition has said, there are many things that I know he can feel a deep and great sense of accomplishment. I thank you on behalf of the Australian people, Warren, as Prime Minister, for your service to Indigenous Australians, not just in this place. A service that I have no doubt will continue long after you leave this place at the next election. But I also want to join with the Leader of the Opposition in thanking you, together with the Minister for Veterans Affairs and veterans all around this country, for your passion and dedication to our veterans. Um, you've led the way in that area. You've had the great honour, which I know you would feel deeply, uh, of being able to serve them in all the ways that you have. It is one of those portfolios of government that doesn't know partisan colour. And in that portfolio, you are a great choice for your party because of your deep commitment and passion to our veterans. And I know that will also continue. You know, in this place, it's not often, I think, that members get to leave here with a great sense of accomplishment that is also, at the same time, not accompanied by bitterness. And I think that is also a mark of you, Warren, that you've been here a long time, you've seen a lot of stuff, you've done some of it, I suspect, <laughs> but you leave it there and you move on and you look forward to your next contribution that you can make. And I think that's a great credit to you and the sort of bloke you are. And that's why I think you're pretty well liked around this place and your, your presence will be missed by all of us who've got to know you, even in a small way, and those of you who know you extremely well, particularly your own colleagues. Can I also join with us in acknowledging Elizabeth and Frankie and Tom, Tess and Jack, 
Um, my daughter was born a couple of months before I came to this place. So I have some knowledge, particularly in those early years, that you would have gone through with Elizabeth and coming home, and kids there, and they go, there you go, I'm doing something else for the next few hours, if not a few days. And I, I applaud your commendation and your gratitude to Elizabeth. That's probably why, mate, you are still together and you're now going to be able to, in a not too distant time from now, to be able to share that, that precious time with her as well and the rest of your family in your post-political career. They share in your service, they share mostly in your sacrifice, and they are joint inheritors of your legacy as well. And your children will be able to be very proud of their father. I'm glad you kept notes, because I reckon it'd make a cracking read. <laughs> <laughs> Snowy's an obvious title, <laughs> I reckon. But another one, and I'll finish on this, and this is probably one of the best, I suppose, acknowledgements that a Liberal can give to a member of the Labor Party. You're a good Labor man. You're a very good Labor man. Thank you for your service. The Deputy Prime Minister, briefly on indulgence. On indulgence, I want to absolutely pay tribute to the member for Lingiari. And as the Veterans Affairs Minister just reminded, the member for Lingiari described himself as a relic. Well, we in the National Party think you're more of a treasure than a relic. We in the National Party will pass the hat around and buy you a new swag. You're going to need it. And the Northern Territory News, one of my favourite papers, should have on the front page tomorrow, not a crocodile, but man with the mow to go. You've been, you've been a great contributor. I used to write a few headlines once upon a time. I like to think I still can. So if the editor's watching, consider it. Consider it. But when I went to the Northern Territory in August, I bumped into Elizabeth and Warren. <laughs> I often go there. I love the top end. And I bumped into them in the mall. Who would have thought? You know, just, just walking along and bump into Warren Snowden. We, we had coffee the next day with, with Luke, and it was great. Because if you want to know what's going on in the top end, you catch up with Warren. You have a convivial cup of coffee. And we had one, and then we had another, and then we had another. And we did agree at the time that the Northern Territory, sorry, Prime Minister, but uh, anyway, this was, this was what we decided that it should have two seats. And, and, and I know the Prime Minister agrees because we believe that regional voices are important. The Prime Minister knows that. The Leader of the Opposition knows that. And when you represent an area of 1.3 million square kilometres, those people deserve a voice as well as anybody in this parliament. It's so, so difficult to get to every far-flung corner of Lingiari, but you, my friend, have done it superbly. I wish you and Elizabeth and four kids, the family, all the very best. You deserve it. I know you're going to be here for however long it takes for the, this term of parliament to continue. We wish you all the very best. The National Party wishes you all the very best. The government wishes you all the very best. Mate, you've got a very, very bright future, and it isn't it great that you can hear your own uh, people eulogising about you and you're still very much alive? <laughs> I know there are many other members who would want to say something uh, today, but they'll have that opportunity uh, throughout uh, the sittings next year. And uh, I personally just want to uh, uh, say I agree with all, all of the words in, in the speeches. I won't repeat them, but we've known each other a, a long time too. And I, I knew throughout this week as we were speaking, it was. Um, it was a big decision and it was a, 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 a difficult speech in many ways and I, I did make a note before question time not to throw you out today. I thought that was <laughs> quite, quite important. So, um, but, you, but well, he didn't, he didn't interject, so that's rare too. But, uh, <laughs> now, um, we've just got a couple of papers. 